Happy Friday! Thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, we finished stitching the fabric scissors and we did free motion quilting on it and we have a back as well. We also did free motion quilting on another piece and we're going to turn these two pieces into a zipper pouch today. I'm pretty excited. I'm, it's going to be... It's going to be interesting because I'm going to make it up as I go. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, I'm here for about an hour and I work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the process the whole uh, along the whole way, you guys. So, all right. We finished stitching the embroidery of the month. It was the fabric only scissors. It's available till the till midnight tonight. <laughs> it has the bundle that comes with all of the fabric and all of our uh, embroidery floss. Our collection of 23 colors of embroidery floss comes with the bundle. And uh, there's a pattern as well. And uh, both will be headed out the door. Uh, tonight and the new pattern, the new embroidery of the month pattern will be coming out tomorrow. So it's your last chance for the, the scissors uh, tonight. Uh, but we are going to take this. We did some free motion quilting for fun yesterday on it. And we also did a second piece here. I'm actually liking this more and more. Last night I wasn't too sure about it, but now I kind of really like it. <laughs> Just some flowers and some fun little bloopy leaves. And we are going to take these two pieces and turn it into a zipper pouch where we just uh, put bias tape basically around the edges instead of sewing a lining because we kind of have a built-in lining with the opposite opposite side that we did on, on both of these. So I'm hoping that we can just use those as the lining and just um, seal the edges with some binding tape. I'm also hoping to make this a box a bag where we cut out little squares and it'll have like a larger base. I'm not sure I've done that in a long time either. So we're going to just kind of figure this out as we go. There's a few issues we may have, but we're going to work through those. <laughs> so thank you guys for joining me tonight. Uh, let's get going here. Okay, there we are. So there's my leftover fabric. So here is what we got, you guys. I am just going to zip through. Oh, hello, Lynn. Lynn's in Alaska. Hello, Joe. Hi, Jan. Okay, so here we are, you guys. I have these two pieces. We're going to trim them down first. I actually really like how this turned out. I kind of want to do a whole quilt uh, with these fun little flowers, and we could, like, hide little butterflies and stuff in. But anyway, uh, I did find a zipper. Uh, the problem is, it's pretty short. Um, it's it's like an eight inch zipper, and uh, I would have rather liked a bigger one that I could cut down and maybe make this a little bit bigger. But we are going to cut it down so we can use this eight inch zipper. So I'll just go right beyond the two stoppers there. So this is how big we're going to make it. The other thing is I do not have a zipper foot for my <laughs> my steampunk, uh, my 1930s uh, Kenmore sewing machine does not have a zipper foot. The foot that's on is pretty thin, so there's just going to be a lot of exposed zipper, more than if I would have had a zipper foot. A zipper foot allows you to get right up next to the coils and sew. Um, mine's going to be probably more out here, <laughs> so we'll we'll see how that goes. There's a few other funny things that will happen, I think, just because I'm not sewing this in the normal way where I'd sew two seams together and then, you know, end up with a, you know, so they'd be sewn together like this and I'd have a seam on the inside. We are going to try and avoid that a little bit. Um, I think it's going to come together. I, I have a plan in my head and it seems like it would make sense, my plan. So we're going to give it a go. So first off... Uh, I need to trim down the piece here. So um, there's going to be quite a bit of base. So I think I'm going to do like an inch of base, which will give us two inches of base total. So that'll be folded in about like that. 
So I'm just trying to think of how tall I want to make I want to make this. So I think we might go like I don't want to go all the way to the top here because I kind of want I want this to be centered and I want it like a pleasing sized bag still. So it does have to be it can't be wider than this really. It could. I mean, actually we could extend it a little bit by putting a tab on here. Although I think I think we're just going to go and trim it down. Oh, now I'm wondering, maybe we should just put tabs on here. And we're gonna try without just because um, that's gonna just be an extra step here. So I'm gonna make it about this wide. So I think it does have to be about about here. So I'm gonna just, just mark that with, with a marker. I'm just eyeballing it to see, to like make the, um, um, this guy in the middle here. Actually, maybe what I should do first is just kind of center this at the eight inches. So let's let's get a my ruler here. We're gonna make this up as we go, you guys. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's double check this. Oh, this is a nine inch, a nine inch, um, nine inch zipper tape. So we'll do nine inches. So I'm just gonna get clear the edges here first. So what I'm doing is here's my nine inch mark. I just kind of want to center my um, scissors in there. So here we got about two inches. Um, here we have a two inches. Let's see, do we need seam allowances on this? I think we do. We're gonna sew it on here. So let's, let's add, I think we can trim that down later. You guys, we're going to do this just totally awkwardly and that's how it's going to be. We're going to do nine and a half inches, assuming that it'll end up being nine inches. So I think, okay, one, two, one, two. I think that's about it right there. So I'm going to get both sides. Are you putting on the tabs on the zipper ends? Deborah? I was thinking about it, but I think, gosh, I mean, it might still be a good idea to put tabs on the zipper ends, but I think we're just gonna leave it. We're gonna just leave it. I like that idea though. Um, I think if I would um, just spend a little bit more time on this versus just kind of trying to experiment and rush through it, I think maybe I'd do the zipper tabs, but, um, we're gonna just fly and see what happens here, I think. All right, so that's um, that. And I'm actually, just cause this, this ruler is kind of horrible. It doesn't have a lot of extra markings. I'm gonna use my mat as my ruler. So I have this straight edge here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and a half. And in theory, if I would have thought about this through a little bit more, I could have cut both sides at once, but um, you'll see in a sec why I'm, I'm not doing that. Because um, on, this, on this one, I'm trying to preserve as much as I can at the bottom, and I'm gonna trim off the top, but I'm gonna do the opposite on the other side because I like the design on the top better than the bottom. Um, and then I'm just gonna square this off the bottom here. So what I'm doing is I'm just getting my square going. I think we're gonna dig into this a little bit. We're gonna go right about there. Okay. Oh, zipper tabs, Catherine, are, uh, we can actually put fabric like around this so like actually like imagine my fingers are fabric we can actually put fabric on the ends of the zippers and that will extend it a little bit further and it also makes like a nice little pretty topper for it right right on the end there so it'll just look like a little piece of fabric we could have done that and then I could have made it a bit wider but we're gonna just see what happens doing it this way <laughs> all right um now I wanted to check that top like where 
where are we wanting this to be? Again, I'm going to lose about an inch on the bottom here. All right, how about right about there? Okay, I'm just going to use my finger to kind of mark that. And I don't think we're going to add really any seam allowance here because I will be um, covering this with a little bit of a bias strip, I think. We're going to see what happens, you guys. Full experiment tonight, for sure. All right, let's just make sure we're square. There. Oh, I didn't put my glove on. That scares me. I always try and have my um, glove on when I cut just in case I go off. I don't want to like snag my finger or anything like that. All right, here's the basic shape. I think I'm going to actually cut out my corners right away as well. So this is a kind of goofy, but it will make sense later. So I suppose I need a seam allowance in here too, but I think, um, should I do one and a half maybe? Make a big wide base. It'll be more like a three inch, or let's go one and a quarter. Maybe that'll make up for, um, yeah, we're going to go one and a quarter. It, we're going to get a little wider base from doing this. And I'm actually not going to use the rotary cutter for this. I'm going to grab, oh, well, here's an air erasable marking pen. That'll do. I'm going to mark one and a quarter here. All right. And let's mark one and a quarter here. We're making um, these little, this little box base for this. I've only done this a couple times, so we'll see how this goes and never kind of inside out, which is what this whole project is going to be a little bit. All right. I'm going to trim those right away. Actually, you know what? I'm going to save those and we're going to cut out this piece first before I get too far. So now this one, I actually like this top area better and I'd like that to be the main part versus this one where we cut off a lot of the top and we kept the bottom. This I want to do the opposite. So I think what I'll do first is just trim myself a nice top and then we're going to just use this as a guide. I think I'll put my ruler right on top and we'll trim the rest and then we'll have two pieces that are the same size. So let's, let's start there. Start by just getting a nice top edge. Get that glove on. <laughs> so my plan tonight, you guys, with this is to just do this till it's done. <laughs> Um, I suspect it might take a little bit more than an hour, but, but we'll see. I don't do a ton of bag things and I am making this up as we go along. So we'll see how that goes. A lot of times when I do that, things take, take a bit of time. Let's actually put it this way because this is ultimately what it's going to end up being like. Okay, so now I'm going to trim this um, the same size approximately. So I think we'll just actually go right on top of it here. Oh, this is going to be the cutest freaking bag, though. I'm really excited about it. If this works like how I want it to work, it's going to be so fun. And I've never done a bag like this before where I seal in the edges with bias tape. That'll be interesting um, since I don't do much with bias tape in general. Um, but I've seen bags like this before. Like I have like a travel, a travel like um, bathroom bag that, that has this happening with it. So I think, I think I get the concept of it. We'll see how it goes though. All right, we're cruising though, we're getting it. It's, you know, even with ju just those cuttings, it just starts to come together. All right, I'm gonna cut this quick before my air erasable marker goes away, but I'm gonna cut this with a scissors 
just because I don't want to cut in any further than, than these squares. I'll show you why we're doing this in a sec here. Um, it's, it's pretty odd, but it will make sense. Oh, fun! You're trying to learn to um, get through the construction of things. Yeah, I, I kind of love that with with these sort of projects, but it always feels like an experiment, and it, it always ends up like, well, that was dumb. I guess I'll do that differently next time. So it's always kind of a little bit of a learning thing. Oh, cute. Oh, I love it. All right, so let's get those little bottoms here, too. Um, so before we get too far, what we're going to actually do is we, when we sew, um, when we get the other side on and the zipper on, we're going to eventually sew these together, and that will give us, like, this, this base. So we're going to have, like, this seam at the bottom here. Um, and then we'll have like this cute little, it'll go up a little bit like this and we'll have like a three inch or two and a half inch or so base on here. So that's, that's, um, that's the deal. Oh yes, the, um, the, um, the August embroidery of the month, uh, it will be at, it will be at, at midnight and uh, I don't actually have it near me to share yet, so it'll it'll be a surprise at at midnight. Um, if you don't stay up for anything, I think I'll still have bundles and stuff available, so I wouldn't worry about not not getting it. All right, let's snip these guys out. Okay. Oh, these are cute. Look at these little quilted squares. What can I do with little quilted squares? I don't know. They're kind of fun. All right. So we have our two sides here. Um, oh, it's going to be cute. Okay. The one thing I want to do yet, just because we're doing this kind of bizarre way of making this, is that I want to finish this top edge. And right now, obviously, it's a raw edge. You can see the batting and everything. I'm going to do like a white bias strip over the top. And it's not really a bias strip. It's just like a binding strip, really. So I'm going to like seal this off basically with a white piece of fabric. And then I think we're going to just sew it directly like on top of the zipper like that. So we'll be able to see our white binding there. And it'll just be kind of floating there like that. Um, that's, again, not how I would normally do a zipper. Uh, usually, you know, you do a zipper like this, and then you'd have your lining fabric here. So you'd have like a layer, your, your front fabric, your zipper, and then your lining would go on top. And then you'd flip it around, and it would be like sewn in like that. We are not doing that because I need to seal this seam. So instead, I'm going to just lay it on the top like that and sew. And then we'll do the same with the other side and and sew. But first I need to I need to seal up these edges. So that means I am going to make a couple bias strips. Luckily we got some white fabric here. Ooh and it seems like it's wide enough this way. That's great. So I think these are going to be one inch wide. Clearly, I need to press this. So we will do that quick first. Oh, oh, fun, Nolene. He, he just stepped outside, but I will tell him when he comes back in. So it's John's birthday tomorrow, and it's the future in Australia. So uh, it's his birthday in Australia. So... <laughs> Noeline's wishing him a happy birthday. That's nice. He will like that. He got like a, a pre-birthday um, happy birthday from my brother because my brother is uh, my brother's going camping out in the woods and won't have internet. So we wanted to wish uh, John a happy birthday and 
my parents were calling for a different reason, but gave him an early birthday, uh, uh, just announcement as well. So that was kind of cute. All right, plenty fine. So I think this is the only time that I'm going to use white as the binding strip. I just think, so what we're going to basically do is make a nice white edge. Oh, that's cute. Okay, so that's that's exactly what we're going to be doing. I thought maybe with it would be cute with the orange, but I think that's just too much. I am going to use the orange on the inside, though. So all the inside seams like this will be sealed in, in orange, not the white. But I think white for the front. So I'm going to just, I mean, this is clearly a crazy piece of fabric. So let's trim that. It's funny, when I'm thinking through projects like this, John always asks me what I'm thinking about because I'm literally, I, was, I caught myself doing this last night, I'm literally staring at the table. <laughs> like this was sitting here and I was literally just staring at it for probably 10 minutes, just like, like a cat staring into space, really, I suppose. I'm gonna cut two um, pieces, two one inch pieces off of here. And um, I'm, he always wants to know what I'm thinking. And <laughs> in that case, when I caught myself doing it, I was just thinking, I was like planning out the steps of this and just trying to picture, oh, should I do this next or that next? I don't know. So I, I sort of have a plan, but that can change as as we go here. So I think I think one inch was fine for this. We're gonna do this. I'm gonna just trim off the selvage. We're gonna do this in a very quick way. We're we're actually gonna do this how I did my um, face mask. That that quick version of the face mask video that I did. That's how we're gonna take care of this. So let's let's see if we can do this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just fold this, I'm gonna get it started, and we're gonna attempt to just do it all at once on the machine. Actually, this is really small. Maybe I should've gone like one and a half inches. Yeah, I don't know, maybe I want more than a quarter inch. Yeah, I'm gonna do this over. We're gonna do one and a half inches. Yeah, we're gonna make them a little fatter. If I wanted a half inch, it'd be cute if they were half inch wide, so. I would have to make them two inches then. All right, change my mind again. We're doing two inch strips here and <laughs> it's kind of wrinkly again. So uh, let's press it. In theory, one inch would have been nice, but it's just, it's gonna be just too narrow. This is gonna be easier. Oh, you guys are sweet. I will give him all, all your birthday wishes. Yeah, we used two inches for the mask. I was thinking I could make them a little bit smaller for this, but I think I think you're right. I think the I think the two inches is just gonna be a little prettier. I was thinking, oh, I only want like a half inch to be shown or a quarter inch, but yeah, I think at least for these white ones, the white top ones, we can have them maybe be a little wider like this. And then I can always decide on the inside ones, but I suspect we'll probably do them like this too. This makes sense. I looked for bias tape. I thought I had, like I can visualize a little package of it in my house here somewhere, but I just don't know where. I dug around um, for it um, last night. I'm just, again, gonna trim off the selvage, assuming that this is long enough still, barely. I'm not even gonna, gonna eyeball this. There, good enough. Okay, so my thought is that we can fold this in half just to get it sort of started. I can leave the ends raw because they will be covered up later. What I was thinking, 
I could just kind of get this started. Man, I guess when we did this, I was kind of just sewing. Eh, we're going to do it like this. I think this is silly and fun, so we're going to do it. I I was just sewing. Like, I'm, I'm thinking about how I did the, um, the, the, um, oh gosh, what's that called? The ties. The ties for my masks, and it. I was doing it just like this, but I was only doing like strips. I wasn't really trying to nest a whole nother object in it, but we're going to give it a go. So I'm just going to get this here to get it started. And once it's on the machine, I'm going to just try and pull and get this to work. So if this works, we will do it on the other one as well. All right, to the machine. So. I have to use this machine. I can't use the machine that we quilted on because those feed dogs get stuck. So we're stuck here again. All right, I'm going to try and stitch right on the edge here, but I got to be careful because I got to make sure that I'm getting the underneath as well. So I might go in a little further just to make sure. Oh, ha <laughs> There we go. Oh, wrong pedal. I'm pushing the pedal for my sewing machine from last night. All right. So now that we're on the machine, I'm going to release this and I'm just going to try and pull. I'm pulling the end and folding in those ends at the same time. There. So we're kind of getting our bias tape and I'm going to fold it right away and there we go. I think I can just tuck this in. We'll do a little bit at a time. Actually, why don't I just finger press this? Cool. Okay, so I'm going to stitch to about there and then we'll we'll do that again. And then we'll see how we did on the other side. <laughs> It'll be interesting. I have not done this before, but I think it's working. The concept made sense. Actually, I think I should finger press that again. I think that was helpful. Ah, Noeline, I would love one. Noeline says I should get a featherweight. Um, it would be perfect for this workspace. It would. So a featherweight is a, it's a singer, singer featherweight. And um, those cool black singer sewing machines, um, I have, I have one uh, that was, John's great grandmother's that is a 99 is what they call so that's the normal size like big sizes like the size of this there are two other sizes the smallest of which is the featherweight um, and that is like I don't know a third of the size or something of of this one I have never seen a featherweight in person actually so um, I'm curious how like what that would look like. All right, that legitimately worked. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's pretty dang cute. And then let's see, it looks like we got all of it on this side too. <laughs> all right, so we have that top seam um, ready. We need to do the same thing on this other one. So let's try and do that right away while this is on the machine. Okay, I'm, I'm real happy with that. Step one of the plan. <laughs> Ooh, Lucy has two featherweights. So fun. They're just so cute. Um, those are the, uh, out of, out of like the old black Singer sewing machines like that, those are really collectible. Like those are the ones, the featherweights that 
sell for like 500 to 700 to you know 1500 really dollars whereas some of these other black black um the big ones the 99s like those some a lot of times people are just trying to get rid of them at garage sales and stuff it's kind of crazy so the collecting the the um the good ones are those uh featherweights so if you happen to have one and you don't want one they are collector's items you can make some cash on on it for sure the problem is on like facebook marketplace and stuff people think that the that the non-featherweight ones are worth that much and they're not i mean i think they're worth that much i love rescuing these poor little babies um but in the collecting world they're not as valuable as the featherweights i actually think now this is this is uh this is um a, a dramatic thing to say but i actually kind of like some of those featherweights that people paint with the with the um like automobile paint i think they're so cute some of these other colored colored ones but like a lime green featherweight would be just so cute but there's like a people who have like machines and stuff they don't like them being messed with they want to keep like their perfect vintageness and a lot of people just feel like you're i don't know being sacrilegious to singer or something by by messing with um its original state but there's so many of these, like, these were everyday items in, in people's houses, and they, there's tons of them, so they don't have the value that they really should, and so a lot of people just throw them out or do other things with them. And sometimes those ones that people paint and color and restore, they are beyond the point of bringing back, like, some of them are so rusty and... The fun paint on it is just neat, I think. All right, I think we did this. I think we're fine here. Ooh, and we're at the end of a... I need to get this off the machine, so while we're at it, let's get our leader in here. Okay, let's review this again here now. Oh, Lucy says, I sew on my featherweight every day. Ugh, that just sounds so nice. Okay, let's snip these apart. These will go away, these little edges. Actually, I might trim those right now. But look how cute, it already looks fun. Like we got this nice finished edge. It looks like we caught, we just barely caught the other side here, that's fine. Let's see, did we catch it? Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> Little awkward, it's okay. The front looks better. Okay, so I am gonna just trim these off. They don't really need to be there. We're gonna cover that up later. Although should I keep them on until the zipper is on, I wonder. Yeah, we're gonna snip them. We'll live with that decision. <laughs> okay, next up is the zipper. So we want to get, let's see, which way do we want to open the zipper? I think, I think this way. So I'm going to just sew right on top. So again, this is a little odd. Um, normally you wouldn't sew right on top of the zipper like this. And we are going to have an exposed underneath zipper, but that's fine. I'm just going to have an exposed zipper. That's how it's going to be. Um, I think we also probably want to pin this. Well, one thing I'm going to do for sure is I'm going to sew back and forth right now this edge because we're going to need to open this up at some point and I don't want that flying away. So what I'm going to do right now is just sew back and forth over this edge. A little prep work here. Oh, 
thanks, Rebecca. I will tell John. You said happy birthday. He'll like it. All right. So like I said, I'm just, I just need this attached to itself for a little bit. This is, should not be seen. All right. Oh, let's, let's put it on a, another leader here. Get our leaders happening at the same time. This feels like a lot of fabric. Eh, I guess it's just one. Okay. That should make our world a bit easier. I think we are going to have to get the pins out as well. I'm going to have it all the way to the side to start out with. Okay, I'm going to try and center it in here. I wonder if I should pin the other one right away too. I think so. We're, we're going to line these up. And I'm going to pin them into place. Now again, if I was doing a different type of bag, we wouldn't have to do this. I would... Um, I would be sewing it like right sides together. Um, I would be using clips instead of pins, but this is a little different, a little awkward here. I'm gonna go right at the end here. Let's move this completely out of the way. Okay, this part's scaring me. I'm gonna put one more in here. I also, like I said earlier, do not have a zipper foot, so that's gonna make this pretty bizarre as well. And like I was saying earlier, a zipper foot would just allow me to get closer to, closer to the zipper coil. So I'm going to have a little bit more exposed zipper. But in this case, I have this beautiful colored zipper. It matches our thread just perfectly. I'm kind of in love with it. So if it's exposed a little bit more, we could actually sew it on the outside of this. That would be awfully cute too. Um, but I do like this little white binding that we did. So um, we're doing it that way instead. But in a totally exposed zipper, like the whole tape being visible on the outside, that'd be a fun fun way to do this. So I'm going to try and get as close to this um, zipper coil. That's what the the um, teeth are called, the coil. I'm going to try and get as close to that as I can with the foot that I have. All right, so we're going to sew and then I'm going to move the zipper out of the way and then we're going to complete our sewing because the zipper kind of distorts what you're working on. Okay, I think I'm going to do this side first. Yeah, okay. But look, it's coming together! It's going to be a bag soon! I'm, I'm stoked! Okay. Let's do it. Yeah, so... This is my, normally a zipper foot, you would not have this much. It would be almost right up to the needle so I could get real close right next to the coil here. Uh, but that is not the case for me tonight. So we're just gonna do, I need my stiletto, I think. Here you are. Get some help with this. So I'm just gonna get, I'm gonna use the edge of my, um, foot here and I'm going to try and get it, I'm going to run that edge along the coil and hopefully um, we'll be pretty even by doing that. I am going to have like the stitch going right through this white, but oh well. It's how we're doing this. I think this is going to work though. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to have the zipper close and then I'm going to open it when I get to when I get a little further down the line here. Oh, 
Oh wow, now this is a bent needle. That's going in the bent uh, pin. I'm gonna throw that away. So this will almost have like a zipper that's a little sunk in. Although I don't know how that's gonna quite work when we do the inside, we'll see. Okay, so right, well, I'm gonna go a little bit further. All right, so right now I'm going to move the zipper out of the way. Oh, I suppose that's why I wanted to do it beforehand. Oh well. Come on, guy. Well, I guess we'll leave it. Um, we'll try and leave it open next time, maybe. Well, that's fine. There, I just didn't, I wanted the distortion that it makes out of the way and we're fine now. Okay, I think I'm gonna just grab this leader because it's right here. So we have this funny little double stitch thing. I'm sure there's, oh, I, there's definitely a way to, no, <laughs> I could have done this um, binding completely different so that this first seam was hidden, but oh well, we got like a double seam going there. That's totally fine. Funny. All right, let's do this side. Stiletto, there you are. You out of the way. All right, I'm going to try and close up that zipper again now. I think it's a little easier to sew with the zipper closed, but it needs to be out of the way because that the pull gets in the way. All right, that's as far as I can get it right now. Okay. Let's see what we got here. All right, we got a zipper in here. It looks like I got a little stain on this or something. Sheesh. So I'll have to try and get rid of that. All right, that is a big part of it, you guys. So there's our zipper. So it'll be a little exposed like that. Kind of cute. And there we are. Okay, so next up is when we're going to be doing, um, we're going to be doing the other edge ceiling. So this is, this is the goofy part. We are going to be doing that same thing that we did here with the white to seal off that edge, that raw edge. We're going to be doing the same thing here. Now here's where I need this open. Um, I have this halfway open um, because we're going to need to turn this right side out <laughs> eventually here. Um, and if, if your zipper's closed during this part of the process, you're in big trouble because um, <laughs> you'll have sewn it shut. So what we're going to do Okay, now I think I can use some clips. But we are going to make uh, some orange 2-inch pieces. 
and I'm gonna seal in this edge all the way up to the zipper pull here. The zipper pull, it'll get kind of folded over. We're gonna just fold it over like that and sew it in. I think that'll be fine. Um, and then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I need, you know, about this much, this much um, fabric here. So let's let's take a look at this orange that we have left because I'd like to use that. This is totally working, you guys. I'm I'm pretty happy. Let's just sew. I mean, we're gonna need two inch strips, quite a few, aren't we? And I'm going to need some for later too. So let's do two inch, two inch. This is enough for the bottom. Two, two. Wow, I think we're going to use up this whole, whole piece. So, okay, we're going to get two edges here. Let's press this. Let's do it right. Let's give it a press. That's true. So Paula, it would look pretty cute with the binding on the outside too. I mean, and we could really probably do that. Hmm. That would be cute too. I don't know. I think I'm still going to try and do it on the inside. Then we can have this. What I'm thinking is that on the outside, it's just going to, your eye is going to go right to it. And I think you want to be looking more at the inside, but maybe it would be cuter. We'd have these funny little pinched edges. So this is, this is what the final shape is going to look like. Yeah, I think we're going to, just because I haven't done this before, I'm going to try doing it on the inside. I, I don't trust myself to do it on the outside quite yet. But that would be really cute. We're going to just stick with this, I think. Yeah, I, I was trying to decide with that orange thread too, like the orange that we used last night, which is really pretty. But then I was like, uh, I'd probably have to, I'd cha have to change the bobbin to that too. So the stitches, the same color on each side. So both of the top stitching would look pretty. And so I'm like, meh, I'm just going to use this more neutral and be done with it. So, yep. Could definitely make a few different choices on this project, but I thought I'd just try and get her done and see if I could see if see if I could do that. Okay, now how did I do this again? I think I was thinking I'd cut two here and then I'd have this left over. And that would be enough for the end. I think that's what my plan is. This is more than enough fabric. I really don't need this amount. I really only need to there, really. So I could trim to here. I think we're gonna do that. Let's not waste, let's not waste it completely. This will be like just enough. All right. Then we'll have a little cute little piece left when we're done. All right, let's trim um, our, we need two two inch pieces out of here. Let's get a nice clean edge first. I have to wrap John's presents yet tonight. While I'm waiting to switch over the embroidery of the month, that's that's well, what I'll be doing tonight. And actually, it looks like I can get another one out of here, so I'm going to just get my bottom piece out of here right away. I thought I was going to have to cut it from the other side. I am still going to have to cut um, a little bit more, but this will be, this will be good. Be saving a little bit yet. Okay, a couple two inch pieces. 
So now this might be a little bit more than I was thinking for the inside. So this is the part that I don't wasn't really thinking too much about seam allowances, like how much I would need. I don't want to sew right over that end. But what I ideally want to do is I'll have my seam, my um, piece here. But I think once I get up to here, I'm going to want to fold it over before we do the last bit of sewing. Yeah, I think that's I think that's kind of what we're going for. So we're going to actually be stitching through a whole lot of fabric here. I'm going to trim this edge. Actually, I'm going to trim all this really nicely. Make sure it's all nice and straight again. And we're going to do the other side too. Now, oh, Colleen, I better not say just because I don't know if he's watching or not. I'll tell you on um, Monday. Okay, I'm just going to get this little edge here. There we go. Out of here. I'm excited about this. And I think, um, you know, it's, we only have like 10 minutes or so left, but so we'll go a little bit over tonight, but I don't think this is going to take all that much longer, honestly. Oh, and I just thought of an idea. I could baste this together first before putting the, uh oh, <laughs> I cut through our, our little bit that was holding it there. That's a bummer. Um, but I think, I think this might solve that. So I think think I can stitch this together like with an eighth of an inch and then I can put this over the top after and then it will be way easier we're gonna do that so I'm going to sew both these edges I I'm gonna sew the bottom edge right away too um, so we're just gonna kind of get these get these uh, we're basically basting them so it's going to be a lot easier. Like they won't flap around everywhere when we try and do the rest of it. Actually, I think I'm going to start at the top to make sure the top is all aligned nicely. Ooh, and we are getting thick here. Ugh! We'll see how the machine handles this. I'm not sure I've, ooh, gosh, doesn't handle it already. I don't, I've never stitched anything this thick thick on this machine yet, so this will be interesting. Get it there. There, so I'm just sewing a little bit on the inside and this will be covered up. All right, let's do this side and then we'll do the bottom. Give it some help. Let's lift it up. Really kind of forcing it through with the stiletto too. Let's do the bottom too, because we'll need to do that eventually anyway. Okay, so here is kind of the guts of our bag here. So now I want to make these pieces to enclose those edges. And I 
think these might be a little wide. I think I might want, um, I think I might have wanted these a little thinner, but maybe I'll just go with it and see what happens. It's an experiment. We're going to go with it, see what happens. And I could press these for real and it would probably be helpful, but I kind of like that way that we were just doing it. So, but now here's, here's the difference. I do want to fold over the edge. So let's just imagine that for a sec here. You know what? These are small enough. I think I am going to, just for the sake of, um, it's going to make it a whole lot easier for me. I think I am going to do this. Uh, I'm going to press these really quickly versus trying to do it without pressing. Oh, Charlotte's thinking the same thing. Charlotte said, uh, if you iron them, it'll be easier. <laughs> I think I need that extra bit of easy right now. All right, I'm going to press them all like this first, and then I will um, press them uh, towards the inside again. And I really should have cut my last piece for the bottom edges, but we'll assess that first, because those box, um, those corners that I cut out, those we're going to have to fold together and we're also going to have to put a seam on that. So I'm not quite sure how that's going to happen with all this bulk, but that's, that's the part that I can't quite visualize. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of, a lot of thickness. Um, luckily these old industrial machines can, can deal with it, which is awesome. I mean, this isn't an industrial machine, but these old, like, pure metal machines. So uh, I showed you guys a way that you could do this with pins really easily, but this is short enough that I'm just going to muck through it with my fingers. All right, let's fold this. So now I think I have to seal my edge, too, because one edge has to be pretty. So I got to do this with, with just two of these. I don't have to do it with, with the bottom one, just the two sides, I think. Hi, Brenda. <laughs> I love, I love doing this though. I love like, thinking it out in my head and like you have the concept and um just trying to figure it out exactly it's built to last and so so everything an old heavyweight <laughs> i like that an old heavyweight i haven't haven't um is that a, a real term because if it is i like it and if it's not i i like it too I'm going to call it my old heavyweight. Okay. This is a wee bit of coordination doing this. <laughs> but like I said, we're not doing long, 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 long bias strips. They're just these three little ones and actually we'll have a couple more little ones but um, nothing that I can't manage with some fingers I don't have to use a tool or anything okay we have two that have the nice edge so those will be our zipper ones and then this one um, which will be our bottom that can have the raw edges on the ends yet because those will be covered up Old, Colleen says, old heavyweight sounds like an old man boxer. Eh, I think that's actually probably fitting for, for, uh, <laughs> for this machine, maybe. <laughs> it's a heavyweight instead of a featherweight. Huh. 
Oh man, as far as real pounds though, this thing is so much lighter than that 1960s Kenmore. Ah, that I've never, um, that's like the heaviest machine by far. All right, just because it's easy, let's do the bottom first. We're gonna do the easy peasy thing. So the bottom, I'm gonna just seal off like that. This will be our warm up. So now in theory, I only wanna go in that quarter inch now, but I don't know. I'm not quite sure how these boxes are gonna work with all this stuff here, but we'll see. I don't think I have to tuck these in at all. I think, I think that'll be taken care of by the edge later. Yeah, I'm not gonna worry about it. Ooh, you know what? This I could be clipping though. I'm gonna just, yeah, let's get a clip. Oh gosh, forgot that was super magnetic. Ugh. Oh, that's cute. Nolene says my dad was a heavyweight wrestling champion, and that's that's my saying that 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 um she would say to him. Oh, that's cute, 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 cute. Old heavyweight. All right, I just need this to get this going. Although it wouldn't hurt to put a few more now, wouldn't it? What did I mean? We're gonna get it. So thanks for um, sticking around here tonight. I know we're gonna go a bit later. I was kind of expecting to go a bit later with, with this, um, just because these bags always seem to take a while. Should I err on the side of just doing a quarter inch? I think we should sew all the way to the edge here. Well, well we're gonna see what happens. I'm gonna just kinda sew, um, I'm gonna put a little back tack in here though, I think, cause I think we're gonna be moving this around quite a bit later. Um, I'm just gonna try and be consistent cause I think, if I'm not, it'll affect the, it, like the box cuts will end up being different sizes because I'm kind of sewing them in at this point. That's the part that I haven't done a lot of before, these box corners, and uh, um, I'm not quite, in my head, I'm not picturing it quite all the way through. So we'll see what happens. We'll be there soon enough. I'm just gonna actually let's go off the edge onto here. Okay. So our bottom edge is sealed. Uh oh, but it's not sealed. You guys look, I missed I missed um a whole edge here. Boo! Well that's not what I wanted to do. Fine, we're gonna be stitching over that again. <laughs> Actually, with bias tape, I think you are supposed to stitch one side on and then flip it around and do the other side. So, I mean, we should maybe be doing that. <laughs> oh well. Already messing this guy up. Luckily, this is the most bottom piece on the inside. And I'm just gonna make a seam right in the middle here. Okay. There, can't even tell. <laughs> Pretty silly. Okay, now let's think about this again. So. Ultimately, this is the part that I'm curious about. So ultimately we'll be um, putting these together like this. So it's kind of a straight line and then sewing over it. Oh, that's gonna work super easy. This is gonna just get sewn over. Ah, perfect. Okay, easy, way easier than I thought. 
I'm, I'm down with it now. I understand. So I'm going to actually just trim this so it's out of my way. It's going to ultimately be the same as that. I did back tack on both of those, so we should be fine. Okay, so now what I want to figure out is these tops, because I do want to... Um, so I looked at a bag that I had, and it just sort of sewed up the side and then flipped it over, which was kind of ugly. But I think... I think this is kind of how it's supposed to technically be with with um, bias tape, right? I'm wondering how I should go about this. First of all, how you're really supposed to sew bias tape is you're supposed to open it up. Um, so you're supposed to go like this and sew on that line and then flip it around. So maybe we should start there. Let's see if we do that though. We'll be like this. I'm not doing something right here. Oh yeah, it would be like this and like this, but then what do I do here? I suppose just like that and then we sew it down and we just have a ton of bulk there. Well, that's what we're gonna do. I am going to do um, this sewing little edge, and I'm actually going to go on the inside a little bit more because I don't want to, um, I don't really want to sew over over that part there. So I'm going to actually butt it right up against there. I'm going to leave that much because I don't know why. And I'm going to clip this. And we're going to do this right. We're going to do this how a bias tape is really supposed to be done. And I'm going to end up here, I think. Yeah, we'll do it that way. Alright, so I'm going to go right on this fold. I know I have a bunch of extra here, but we're going to not care. So you, bias tapes are actually way easier than what I was doing. You just sew it. I mean, I was skipping a step. I was skipping this step, which is the part that makes it kind of easy. Oh, I lost my thing here. Okay, and I'm going to just kind of back tack here. I think that'll make it a little bit more secure too. Yeah, um, for these bags, I mean, it's sewing through these zippers and all this bulk sometimes. And, you know, we have this batting in here too. But a lot of times people would use, people use um, some interfacing and stuff. So it is quite, quite the deal. You are sewing through a lot of things here. But there, so now we sew this on one side, and now we can fold it over and sew the other side. Much easier than what I was doing. Um, and then we're also going to fold this under. So we're even adding more bulk and then folding it over. Ooh, let's really tuck that in. It's not going to be like a perfectly perfect finished thing like what some other ways of doing this might be, but I still think it's kind of a fun way of doing it. There, it's going to be like this. I think we're going to actually even start there. We're going to go this direction. I'm going to actually, oh good, this goes over a little bit more. Um, we want to make sure, oh well, that's what I have clips for. I'm like, I want to make sure that I get the back of this at the same time now, so I don't miss it like I did earlier. I can clip it there. But yeah, doing that first, sewing it down is really helpful. <laughs> Could have been doing that the whole time. We're getting there. One little 
whole section at a time. I might need my stiletto to push this through. Ooh, or not. This machine is awesome, man. It... Uh-oh. Maybe I spoke too soon. Come on, guy. There you go. Get through the bulk. There you go. I'm just kind of going wherever I can on this one. I think really I probably should have sewn it the other direction because that's the side that is loose and this is the side that's down. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't have needed to look at this side. So I don't know if you're quite under, like if, if you guys get what I'm saying, I should have flipped this the other way. We'll do that on the other side. Okay, but we should have a nice finished edge up here now. That should look relatively okay. <laughs> there we go. It, it's finished enough. It's not great, but everything's in there, and that's that's what we want. Okay, and let's just trim off this excess right away. Let's get that other edge. This is going to be cute on the inside. We're going to actually see all of these seams here. Okay, let's do this one now. Again. Oop, let's go on this side. We had it about like this. All right, and we're gonna sew this seam on first without hitting that end. Getting ahead of myself again. Let's clip it down. I'm sure there's a whole pile of things I could be doing differently on this and just tweaking it and um, just different tricks and stuff, but it's, I always kind of like giving it a go first. <laughs> kind of trying without, without um, going based on like, you know, my idea in my head of how it should be done and then maybe doing some research after. Or sometimes I do the research as I th think things through, but... Tonight we're totally winging it, which, and I'm having a good time, <laughs> so I hope, I hope, uh, I hope I'm not scaring you guys off. Oh, Robin says she's glad I'm here late tonight. Oops, I lost. This is a little scratchy, so if I don't take this out just right, I lose, um, I almost lose my top. I, it got worn away there. Okay. Now we should be able to do that fold over thing again. And in theory, now this, I should be stitching on this side. Oh, and I think I did this differently too. I think this is probably more how it's supposed to go. Oh, check this out. Maybe I should have gone like that. Well, there you go. Well, I bet you this is how it's supposed to be done. Watch this. So I, I folded it um, in half first, like the half way, and then I'm tucking this end in. Oh, maybe I lost it now. Get in there. There, now that is a protected little end there. All right, I'm gonna have to maneuver that a little bit more. I think when I unfolded it, I made it all weird again. Not sure if this is really how it's done, but I like it. That seems like a nice kind of sealed end. 
let's clip that so I don't lose it. And let's clip the rest of this. So now I'm going to sew on this side. This is the side I should have sewn on before. Um, just because then I can pay attention to the edge. Yay, and then we just have our little bottom pieces. Now for that, I do have to cut more of this binding stuff, so we'll have to cut a little bit more. Should have done that earlier, but oh well. Okay. I am going to go in a little bit so I hit that other side, but we'll see. First time doing a zipper like this, so it's it's an experiment. <laughs> okay. First time doing goofy seams like this too. I'm liking it though. Stop using my leaders here. All right, we got that side. Ooh, I'm excited to turn this right side out. We got a little bit more to go. Yay, this is gonna be so cute. All right, other side. We must have cut that already. Okay, so there's one more thing to do. This is awesome. So we got these uh, these sewn in. So from the front, it's going to look like when we turn it right side out, it's going to be like a nice sewn together cute edge. Like it's going to be totally nice. Um, and then on the inside, it'll just be this funny seam. So what we're going to what we're going to do next is we're going to actually kind of origami this a little bit. So I'm going to fold it outward like this. Maybe I should get some clips before I do this. So I think one, we should have one go one way and one the other, don't you think? Yeah, like that. So it's not having tons of bulk. And we're going to actually sew right across there, but we're going to do it um, with the, with the, um, with another edging here. But I think we should kind of sew it in place first, like what we did before. So I'm gonna like matching up the seams almost like this. I'm gonna just put a clip right in there and we're gonna sew over the top of this right now and then we'll do we'll do the other side. So this is what's gonna start giving um, our piece some dimension. And it's just kind of fun. We're just squishing. So those are those two boxes and all of a sudden it's gonna become this corner. It's kind of amazing. So let's just Again, we're just kind of basting this here because we're going to cover it up with our orange piece. But I I want to hold it there for the time being. And I'm actually probably going to trim it a little bit too. It looks like it could use it. All right. So we're going to need a piece that's that long. Ooh, and we're going to have to do that whole fold over thing too. Um, so both ends are nice. So these ones have to look pretty at the end because there's nothing going to be covering it up. These, we are covering things up with it. I think I'm going to just cut right across there. Clean that edge up. There we go. All right, let's do the other side. I think I can do that while I'm here. So see, there again, those are our two cutout pieces. But if I pull them out this way, we're kind of just like kind of folding them into each other, but we have to spread it out to do that. There, so we're kind of making a mouth and then putting it together, matching up our side seam and our bottom seam. This is actually our bottom and I'm going to fold it the same way. So it, it, you know, I don't want to twist it. I don't want to go this way because then it'll on this side, it'll be that way and this side, it'll be this way. So I'm going to match it. I'm going to go this way and you can really kind of flatten it out. I want to feel those seams um, like against each other here. It's gonna be cute. I'm really, really 
stoked for this. Okay. It looks like a bag. It's got three dimensions. Ooh, this didn't line up all that well, though. I think my square got a little distorted here. Well, as long as I sew through it, we'll be fine. This might end up being a little bit bigger than the other side. We'll see. <laughs> so this one feels more awkward. Ugh, that's not going anywhere. Okay. You could. So, Don, you could actually do this whole thing with a wide piece of ribbon. You could use, like, a gross grain ribbon. Um, I actually looked for some of that. I'm like, ooh, maybe I could do this with ribbon instead. Then I don't have to make make these binding pieces. But I could not find that in my house either. So we are ending up making these things. But look, it's, it's a bag just about. Ah! It's so cute. Okay, so now the last part is we just need to cover this up and, um, you know, wrap around the edges at the same time. So that's going to be a bit annoying. So we're going to need... Let's see, we're gonna need about, let's just call it three inches worth. We'll fold over just that little bit. So two two inch pieces that are three. These are a little bit big, but we're gonna just cross cut there. I am gonna press just a little bit cause this feels like it's a little distorted. Oh, I'm so happy we turned this into a bag. I'm really, really, really happy with this. It's so fun. So fun to make bags. I love when you end up with something useful, and I guess that's why I like quilting, too. It's just kind of magic, I think. Okay. Uh, this ruler's sitting here. We'll use that. You know, and I think I am going to cut these ones perfectly three inches and not have like any weird ends. So we'll cross cut these. Okay. Ooh, good. And look, we're going to have a nice big chunk of orange left. I love this color orange. So this is, that's going to be nice. All right, let's just trim the one edge up nice. Oh, that's true. I appreciate that, Sue. Sue says I'd rather watch you work on a project than watch doom and gloom on the TV. Ugh, for reals. All right, actually, let's just use the board. One, two, three. Okay, so three inches does not look like a lot. Is that what we thought still? Yeah, I guess we don't really need a lot, do we? All right, I'm definitely going to fold these with the iron. I don't, I mean, this is just gonna, I don't need to make it more difficult for myself at this point, I guess is what I'm saying. Ugh, but if you have bias tape, like just bias tape tape pre-made from the store, you can skip all of this stuff that I'm doing. You, you, you would just be done. But it is kind of cute because it does match. We're getting there. We're only like 25 minutes over tonight. That's not too bad. <laughs> Oh, let's fold. I think the way I was doing it here, I don't think I need to fold in the edges at all until I need to. Yeah, they're both tucked in, so I don't need to deal with that. We're going to just fold them both in. Ha <laughs> ha, see, I'm learning more about bias tape too. Magic. I 
think so too, Kathy. Kathy says, fun Friday night. And we're making something just usable and cute and fun. I'm, I'm really excited. And I, I do really like that quilting that we did on the back um, yesterday. I wasn't sure about it, but then this morning I looked at it again and I'm like, you know what? I think these flowers are really cute and I like these cute little bobbly um, leaves. So I'm really actually happy with the back quilting, um, the design of it. Like more than I thought I was going to be. All right, there's our things. Let's see if I can construct this. Well, first of all, we just need to sew the one side on again. So let's see if I can figure that out. Okay, so we're just gonna, we're gonna open this up and we're gonna sew along the edge. We're gonna go right in the middle and then we'll fold over the edge. And before we sew, I will tuck in both, both sides. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. Decided. Oh, Shirley's watching this and the um, Braves and Mets baseball game. Nice. Gosh, so I've I've only seen little clips of baseball games, but just what they're doing for background people or and different places are doing it differently. It's just so weird. Weird, weird. I think I'm just going to start sewing on the line right away. But also kind of just fascinating and ah, stiletto always oh, disappearing. <sighs> grr, 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 where did you go? Ugh, way under the machine there. Okay, let's line this up again. Oh, Braves won. <laughs> nice. Okay, this is actually going to make the box um, base a little bit bigger because I'm sewing it up a little higher. Okay, let's see if we can figure this out now, the little foldy game that we got to do here. Got my clips ready. All right, so we can fold. Okay, wait. Now here's where I was going to fold it over. Let's do both sides at once. So fold over, fold over. And then we're going to fold it inwards like this, but then under at the same time. So this is where it's a little bit goofy. Tuck that underneath. Ooh, not bad. Not great, but not bad. Let's try that again. I'm going to do the one side, and then we'll do the other side. Maybe I just need to swoop it under. Um, the good thing that is that this is just on the inside. So maybe it was a good good um, that I just did the inside, this on the inside and not the outside, because we would have had to do all this on the outside, all this, like, origami on the outside, and I don't know if I would have been able to manage manage that as well. Ooh, I think we got it, though. Ah, ha, 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 it's so funny. All right. I'm going to do the other side right away. Oh, no, I'm not. It's not on yet. I thought I had the other one on, but I don't, and I don't want to lose this. But we totally have this, you guys. Look. Ah, it's perfect. Ooh, sort of. That one's a little weird, but it's perfect enough. I'm sewing it. All right, and then this is the side that's stitched down, so I'm going to sew on the top to make sure I get it all. Take that off. We're going to put a whole... Oh, gosh, I can't even get underneath there. All right, we're going to... Ooh, don't turn into a big knot. Uh-oh. I'm not sure if we're sewing. Shoot, let's see. Do some back tacks. Get under there. Come on, this is so much 
fabric. And where is this coming from, this crazy loop here? Just gotta make it to this end here. All right, let's back tack. Oh, am I sewing anything? No! Okay. All right, our bobbin must have gotten weird. So, all right, let's reclip this before it all falls off. Ah, I thought something was weird. Oh, I have the... Oh, I don't have anything on the bottom. Did I... I lost my bobbin thread. Oh my gosh, does that mean I ran out of bobbin with this much left? Because... That's gonna be a bummer. Oh my god, boo! <laughs> oh, you guys. Alright, let's get more bobbin thread. <sighs> There's the bobbin winder right here. Boo! <laughs> oh, bummer! Oh, that makes me sad. Okay. Oh, jerk butts. <laughs> oh, man. We lost at chicken tonight. Oh, gotta pop that up first. Oh, I suppose... Loosen that up. Well, now I'll be ready for next time, I suppose. Wow, it's going on really well, though, compared to normal. All right, I think that's about what we'll do. And now I gotta remember how to put this bobbin in again. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can do this now. So I think my old one points forward, or like away from me, and this one goes towards me. I think that's that was the big difference between my one bobbin and this one. Okay, and then now I'm coming down on this side, and then up, ah, oh, good, I remembered. <laughs> That's always, that's always a question mark, right? If you um, put your bobbin in the right way. Okay. <sighs> I feel better. Oh, we got to thread our machine though now too. Okay. Let's go down here. And back up. And we're good to go. Oh man, what a bummer. Actually, it's probably good. No, we won't, um, we'll have more on there for next time. Gosh, there we go. <sighs> Back in business. I'm happy I know how to thread this though now. <laughs> that was not always the case. Uh, I had to look up, I had to Google or uh, YouTube how to thread this machine. I had to figure out how to do that bobbin. <sighs> All right, let's take this sort of out. I don't think I'm like, it looks like I got enough for a back tack in here. Oh gosh, look, and I got a whole pile of a mess here. Um, I'm gonna leave that back tacking cause that's that kind of acting as my, my like a pin right now. So let's just clip this. All right, now let's get it. <laughs> and then we got the other side to do yet. Oh. oh, and this always is a little bit weird after, after the binding. It always needs like a little kickstart. Or after the, um, doing the bobbin, I mean. Uh, come on. Okay, we're gonna have to. Oh, I am in reverse. 
first, though, too. Let's go forward. Let's see if uh, this guy's touching. Yep. Oh, you know, this is what happened last time. So the bobbin smooths down that, um, smooths down my wheel so much. I'm just, like, pushing it now. Oh, come on. There we go. I'm pushing, I'm literally pushing the motor up against the, um, the wheel. Oh, wow, that sounds so quiet, though. Maybe that's how it's supposed to be. <laughs> I don't think so. But I, I'm really pushing up against it because the wheel isn't making the big wheel go. Ugh, this might just end up however it's going to end up at the end here. I'm definitely helping it along. Going in reverse. Good thing this is on the inside, and good thing we're almost done. <sighs> Made it. I'm going to have to sand down that wheel again. So um, if you sand down that smaller wheel, then it gets more of a grip on the big wheel. Um, so I need to sand that down again, I think, because when I do the bobbin, it's spinning so fast that I think it smooths it down. I think, I think I'm basically polishing it when I want to do the opposite. I need to rough it up so that that small motor wheel can um, grip better on the bigger wheel. There's definitely a design flaw there. They should both be rough and then they can grip to each other or something, or both be rubber or something, I don't know. All right. Well, we got one, one of those done. Let's, let's try and finish this other, other thing, but ugh, we're getting there, you guys. It's gonna all, all work. Okay, let's try this again now. I'm going to center this again. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, it would be, you're right, Nolene, it would be better pushed up harder against the wheel, um, less stress on the, on the motor. I mean, yeah, because the motor's kind of bobbing around the whole time a little bit, but I am, like, I'm literally pushing the motor, which also pushes the wheel, I'm pushing that up against, um, against this, just to get a better grip. Oh, I would not have been able to do the whole bag like this, so good thing it's only this little ending bit. I'm not even going to back tack this. Oh, maybe I should. I'm gonna. All right. Good enough. Let's uh, get it off the machine. Oh, I should have put it on this. Oh, well. I should have put it on the uh, leader there. Okay, last step, you guys, and then we are done, and then we can fold it right side out and see what we got here. Let's get the one side figured out. Yeah, like a notched wheel, exactly. That that would be nice. But yeah, the smooth wheel against a smooth wheel just is a little silly. Okay, that was a little easier. Boop. Okay, let's do this side. Oh, I didn't really give myself much slack there, did I? Ooh, that might be a problem. We're gonna have to get this side really well. I'm not even gonna try and fold it in more than that. Ugh, yeah, I am. Get in there. Alright, 
I'm just gonna do the best I can with what I got right here. I I could see doing this again though in this this way, like with the edges, um, these out these um kind of bound edges like this. Uh, like I was saying last night, like I think this would be a, an awesome solution like, if you had a bunch of just spare blocks, like unfinished blocks, or what are they called, those orphan blocks. If you had a pile of orphan blocks from other projects, just turning them into bags like this, ugh, I love that idea. All right, let's see if this is still spinning. Yep. Gonna have to get the sandpaper out. Boo. One-handed sewing. This is like sewing if you didn't have a, and you wanted to film and you didn't have a tripod, you'd have this other hand, like, filming. All right, we got it. Oh, good. All right. There was a fix, at least. I just have to sew one-handed, trim these little buggers, and uh, let's turn it right side out here. We are done sewing. All right, let's take a look. This is it. This is um, it. So first of all, let's take a look at this this inside, which is so cute. Um, see, we just bound bound those edges. Here's that side, the bottom, and then uh, we just went over all those raw edges, even that bottom raw edge with just these two little guys at the end. And we finally got that flip, finally got that flip going. Did a little weird um, at the that first one, but I think we got it figured. So this is why we needed to have that zipper <laughs> undone, because if this was closed, you'd have to try and open this zipper without having access to it, and oh my god. You only do that once, <laughs> once or twice. So, all right, that's the inside. Let's plop it right side out. See what we got. Let's check out those corners. Ah, oh, see, those two little squares turned out to be like this perfect little corner. Let's get this one, punch those out. And actually that binding really makes those nice and pointy too. <laughs> it's cute. All right, we gotta poke these, poke these out. These ones might be a little goofy. Oh no, not bad. Oh, maybe I should have done a um, little extra piece on there, but I think we're okay. Let's let's zip it up, form it a little bit, and there we go. That is a legitimate little bag here. Awesome, here, I'm gonna get a little taller up so you guys can see. So, um, that's the height. I think it's cute, and with that big base, you can just, it can really, like, sit, too. Uh, I kinda wanna make a, a tassel yet, but, um, maybe I'll just make one <laughs> later, just cause, uh, I don't have a jump ring for the tassel, but I think I'm gonna, out of, like, some of the remaining thread from this, I'm gonna do a little tassel on here to make it, um, easier to pull. Cute. I think we're a little crooked. Let's. We could try and press this a little bit, but I don't think it really needs it. Awesome. There we are, you guys. <laughs> Our silly little bag. But yeah, there you can see all the the bound edges there. It's cute. This is gonna be like a really nice little uh, to go craft bag, or I don't know what. But it's a good a good kind of deep size to it. Yay! Awesome. All right, you guys, I'm gonna flip you around. <sighs> okay, so thank you so much for sticking with me uh, tonight here uh, and me changing the bobbin and, on, and all that. But here we go, here's our cute little bag. Uh, I might just kind of press it a little bit just to get um, the nice little edges. I think I could just finger press it. Let's just get a nice little base to this. It's cute though. I like the back. Oh, fuzzles. 
but there you get all the those little funny leaves and those funny flowers little front zipper and then on the inside there cute all right you guys i'm satisfied with that that was a fun process i have not done uh that type of bag before where we just uh close in those edges like that i could totally see doing this again there are some improvements i think like the zipper if we did some zipper tabs this part kind of turned out a little goofy um that should be turned in a little bit more like this other side but all in all i'm really happy with it this was fun <laughs> It was fun hanging out with you guys, too. So thanks again. Uh, last day again of the of the, uh, the fabric scissors. <laughs> so at midnight tonight, which is uh, about an hour and 40 minutes, I will switch this over and it will be the new embroidery of the month for August. It's August. <laughs> so thank you guys again. Uh, have a fabulous weekend. Uh, I will give John all your birthday wishes, and I will see you on Monday. Good night.